Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Ship Manager. Hope you're having a great day today. I've been running into a bug, and so I've kind of been going back and forth a little bit from Athens and Messina, sort of back and forth, trying to gather a little bit of money, just kind of doing this little short cruise. I'm running into a bug that I think is confirmed on the Steam forums with this, but uh, essentially the longer the game runs, the more fuel you consume. Uh, it's a very strange thing, uh, but essentially you get to the point where you're using like 40,000 units of fuel for a day cruise and it's just impossible to complete it. And I, I, you know, sort of like went out into Steam and there are other people having this problem too. And it seems like it's being acknowledged and it's going to be fixed soon. So, uh, we'll see. But, uh, in any case, I've been going back and forth between Messina and Athens to raise money so that we could improve our cruise and try to get a better experience to try to get more money uh, as we proceed forward so i've restarted the game so we're fresh on numbers now and we're at 11,160 uh fuel here but in the last stop in messina i went ahead and got a whole lot of provisions so we're up to 2600 provisions now i shouldn't have to buy them for a while and i'm hoping now that we're in athens with the fuel is cheap i'll be able to uh do that too i'd like to show you that we have the storage room in the ship now and um, I'm going to kind of sort of touch base on what that storage room can do for us. I'm not entirely sure at this time that it's worth it because of how it works. But uh, we have it. And uh, trying to sell a room after you've installed it, at least in this difficulty anyway, I do not get 100% refund. So I would end up losing money. So I'm just going to keep it there for now. If nothing else, I could always choose not to staff anyone there since I wasn't really using that space anyway uh so we have uh, lots of different rooms through here one, one of the things i want to do to improve the experience for my people is that we can actually go over to this little button here this is upgrade you can also hit u on the keyboard and each one of these rooms can be upgraded so there's some customization here and when you upgrade them a couple of things happens uh one the star rating for that room goes up because it's an upgraded room it probably has nicer things in it um the durability goes up so you have to attend to things less often, less cheap, right? That you have, you have more expensive, more durable materials. That makes sense. Um, I, what I don't understand quite though is how the, the upgrade to the room impacts fuel consumption. That part is a little bit weird to me. I'm not sure why the ship would use more fuel by upgrading the room. The only thing I can think of is that like there's some really heavy stuff in these rooms and upgrading it just makes everything heavier somehow. Because I get why adding a room would make more fuel consumption, but uh, this is a lot. <laughs> 0 0.03 per second uh, is a lot. That's many, many gallons of fuel that we're going to be consuming because I upgraded the quality of a room. So that and that's that's for each room that you do too, which is kind of interesting. Um, there's also upgrades that you could do to the diner, which of course adds to fuel consumption as well and upgrades you can do to the pub. And I, I like these upgrades first more than the room upgrades, only because um, I, I believe anyway, there's a lot of interaction in these rooms. This is where they actually buy things. Um, but if you were to upgrade the rooms, it might mean less you know, repairs and stuff being needed. So what I'm gonna do instead is do a mixture of a, com a combination of these things. I'm gonna go ahead and take the red rooms at the top, these three red ones here. And we're gonna go ahead and just upgrade these. It's 243 each. So we bring up the quality and things, right? And uh, maybe this means we won't have to, you know, manage these quite as closely. It's over 700 bucks for each of these from this stage, so I won't do it. Uh, there's a case to be made to upgrade a lot of these other rooms as well, uh, just to add to the experience. But for these small cruises and for these short ones that I've been doing, uh, I don't think it makes a meaningful impact. What I'd like to do is to get rooms, instead of just increasing the quality for one guest for you know 700 bucks i think i'd rather increase the quality for all guests that are using a service for about 700 bucks so i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna do that we're gonna increase the quality of these two rooms in, in, as well now we also have at dock or while we're here at port i suppose we also can see that our bed and stuff is is really like dirty and not durable and things like that um and that's because between cruises your ship doesn't get refined nothing gets cleaned or anything like that while you're in port okay and so you can go up to ship services and pay to have a room repaired it's 45 bucks and then everything just sort of starts but this only does one room and it the thing about it and now we're going to get into this while i look at the janitor stuff too because i wish the janitor operated a little bit differently um it's only going to do this when the room gets bad enough to like this level right it doesn't 
do a generalized reset of every room. And I kind of wish that it would do a generalized reset of every room, even if it's not super bad, because some of these are at the verge of needing it, but they're not there. And so that means I have no option to do it at port. Uh, the other thing I wish would happen is maybe things durability and cleanliness would maybe go up slightly. You know, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like there's no reason why we can't do our laundry while we're here at dock, right? But <laughs> it is what it is. Um, in any case, I have the same crew that I've had before. It's working out okay. And uh, we're ready to do another cruise at this point. I've got 3,200. And I was thinking about going over to Antalya. I haven't been here yet. And I was hoping that if I had enough fuel... Uh, because the ticket prices here are pretty good for the for the duration of the cruise. It's a very short cruise. 96 per ticket is pretty good. We can also go up to Dubrovnik, which is a significantly longer cruise at 800 nautical miles. So this one might be a bit more of a challenge, um, and we get more money for it. But it, you got to remember, we also have to get back, and Dubrovnik has very expensive stuff up there. So I would want to buy a ton of fuel in order to uh, make this trip there and back. Um, so we could maybe go for that and... Uh, if you buy a ton of fuel, perhaps we'll make it. Because uh, I think this one's a, a better cruise overall. Uh, it says special rooms, large uh, cabin left-sided, large right cabin. Uh, you know, so it, it needs all these special rooms that um, we we do not currently have in our boat. And I've had this comment where it's like, you're not providing all the rooms. It's like, you can't do that. Um, unless I want to do the same, same cruises over and over again. So, you know, if I go to Messina, I have a diner. So that works. And people are generally happy with that. Uh, if I go all the way over to Barcelona, I have a pub and a diner. So people were generally happy with this too. But this is a very long cruise. We're talking 1565 nautical miles. And this is the one I wanted to do for this video was this cruise. But I keep not making it because of this fuel bug. So we'll see what happens with this. Maybe, maybe the fuel will be okay. Uh, I'll just buy a ton of fuel and we'll just waste all of our money on fuel here and see if we can make it to Barcelona because that's what it ultimately comes down to. Like the longer your cruise goes on, the more fuel you use. So um, let's, let's actually try it. We'll see what happens. I'll go ahead and confirm Barcelona as our destination because we can provide all the services that they want. Hopefully we'll have a good goal, but the difficulty is very high on this one. We'll have a great reputation reward if we can come up with a, if we can do it right. So, um, what I, what I was thinking about doing for this cruise, though, is I, I kind of think about getting more crew members. It is becoming increasingly difficult, for the last three cruises that I've ran, it's becoming increasingly difficult to keep everybody in good shape. They, they get tired, and I just don't have enough people to replace them, right? The gastronomy and service things that they're doing, uh, it, it takes a lot of toll on them. You can only have one person as janitor at a time. Uh, so there's going to be some micromanagement with crew here for sure for a long cruise definitely and what I could maybe do to help help bypass that a little bit is just simply to have more crew members and that way I can flip flop them and, and things so what I was thinking of doing is going in and buying you know three thousand dollars and getting one more crew cabin so that I can have more crew the issue though is that now that I'm choosing Barcelona I, I don't have enough money to do that and buy the fuel. And if I don't buy the fuel, I, I definitely won't uh, be able to, to do anything. So I kind of have to make a choice here. Um, I'm going to sell tickets. And that ticket, the ticket sales may be enough to tip it over uh, into being able to have enough fuel. Um, or I could just say, hey, we're going to do quality uh you know crew management we're gonna make sure that we don't we have people resting regularly we don't need everybody in every room all the time right we're, we're gonna see if we can maybe manage this it's gonna be a micromanage beat i'm sorry that's the way the game is uh you can't you can't be successful in this game without micromanagement it's just the way it's built i wish it was different to be honest but it's just the way it's built so um i think i'm gonna go with nine people again sort of skeleton crew on this and, and we'll talk about how the I think, anyway, how the uh, janitor could be improved uh, a little bit here. And also a little bit about how cleaning works in general in the game. So we have the normal ticket price at 127 Or we could, you know, advertise to make sure we can get that $16. Um, I, think, I think advertising for this very long cruise, they're going to be using a lot of services, right? Lots of rations or lots of uh, provisions and stuff. So I think it's really important for this long cruise to get as many customers as possible on the boat. Uh, so I'm going to take out a newspaper ad for this. And uh, I, I think with the newspaper ad, I could leave it at 100% and, and certainly get to 16. Um, I, I think so anyway. So we're going to we're going to try it and see what happens. Okay, so it looks like we definitely got there. And that's gonna be two grand. We're at 4516. At this point, I cannot build any more on the ship. I've locked it. I can't do anything else. 
I do wish there was a way to make some modifications to the ship after selling tickets. Uh, what I mean by this is I'm not able to add any additional services. I'm not able to add any additional cabins for passengers. That part makes makes fine. But what is the logic behind preventing me from adding one more crew cabin and hiring more crew? You're already going to allow me to hire a crew. Why not allow me to add a crew cabin after the money? Maybe I'm a little bit short on money to do that. And the ticket sales puts me over the top so that I can get the extra crew. That would be a very good thing to do. But maybe the logic behind this is that once you sold the tickets, um, you know, people aren't willing to wait a longer period of time to go on that cruise. So there's not enough time to make the modifications. Perhaps perhaps that's the, the logic behind that. I could go with that. That, that would make sense to me. Uh, anyway, so we have the same crew we've had before, but some of them are just already tired. They they get a little bit of their stuff back between cruises, but not a whole lot. And so one of the other things I think I'm going to do here is take somebody who is really, you know, really tired. And I can't really, you know, like maybe Stefano here. He's three and three on these two things. Plus, he's got a little bit of organization. If we can find someone to replace him with, I don't really, you know like the idea of necessarily firing someone because they're tired. Uh, but there's not really anybody here at this port that could really replace the funnel. So we're just going to have to go with what we've got. Uh, all right. Last thing then is the resource market. 4,500 bucks. I'm going to need a ton of fuel for this trip. Like we're going to use a lot. It's it's an unrealistic amount of fuel, to be honest, but we're going to use a ton. Um, and there's really no way in the game currently. I have seen dev commentary saying something about revising how fuel is displayed and, you know, to kind of better inform the player of how much fuel they need for a certain crews. I would very much appreciate that because telling me how many minutes of fuel I have in port right here is very unhelpful. It doesn't tell me anything. Um, and then it, it, likewise, the per second thing is very unhelpful. I would much rather prefer that you tell me how much fuel I need per mile, per nautical mile, uh, even per day would work as well uh, because we do have an estimated length or duration of the cruise. That would be helpful to you, but I don't exactly know how seconds translates to real minutes or hours or days right in game. There's There doesn't seem to be a, a solid way to convert that. It's certainly not having 60 seconds per minute and 60 minutes per hour and then 24 hours per day. That does not seem to be an adequate uh, conversion rate for the game. So I, I'm not entirely sure how that works. Anyway going along with this uh we're gonna need a ton of fuel like i said so i'm gonna thinking 10 uh you know i mean honestly i'm not even entirely sure 21,000 units of fuel is enough for this just by the way the game's been treating me lately so i'm gonna have 5,000 more units uh so we're gonna say 26,000 units of fuel for this cruise that gives me almost an hour i have no idea whether an hour of fuel is enough uh for this uh because the cruise is 1500 nautical miles it's possible that an hour in game is one day like that could be the direct translation too. Uh, I have, I don't know. So I'm really going overboard here probably by getting another $10,000 or another 10,000 units of fuel. And we're going to bump this up to like 40,000 units of fuel. I think for this cruise, I think, I think that's where I'm going to be actually here. I, I wasn't going to, but I'm, I'm going to make sure we have enough fuel because it's annoying to run out of fuel. You, you basically have to save scum it, um, because it ends your entire game. Like you lose all the profits that you've gained from that cruise you don't get back anything that you spent for the provisions of course then uh what happens is you uh you lose reputation and then you have to start the cruise with the provisions you already got which by the way you're already out of fuel because you just ran out uh but you also most likely because you spent so much money on fuel for that cruise you probably have a negative bank balance and so now you have a negative bank balance and you'll have to sell tickets and hope that those ticket sales push you over the top uh and if you don't if none of that happens then you have to take a loan so it's it's crazy uh there's there's a lot of stuff going on there um and as far as the loans go uh i don't see a way to do that i've been told you can take a loan but i i don't I actually haven't haven't done it yet so i don't know how that even works if that's even a thing maybe we'll go over here and this isn't going to tell me either so maybe there's an option for a loan when you run out of money i'm mostly just i'm mostly just saying these things um like off of what people's comments have been so i haven't really experienced i have experienced running out of fuel before but i haven't experienced like the idea of trying to keep going after running out of there um so it, it is what it is there's these things to buy too and i don't know what they are and there's also these which look like cleaning supplies so i figured once i got the janitor i'd be able to buy the cleaning supplies but that must be something different 
some new services later on, right? Okay, so I think this is get this is enough, uh, you know, blabbing. It's been 15 minutes and we've just been blabbing about the different stuff. But uh, I'm gonna spend this little extra cash just to repair this room. No, I'm gonna do it right away instead. I'm just gonna have one of my people do it instead. All right, let's set sail and uh, we'll talk about how the the janitor works and we'll get all this stuff kind of sorted up and, and ready to rock. Okay. All right, so pause this really quick. I need to make sure all my jobs are managed because they are going to swarm the diner and the pub immediately. Almost everybody's now going to the diner instead. Um, if we scroll down, we can see that uh, in storage, we have a janitor, all right? So everybody's got a job. Nobody is not without work, right? Or nobody's without work right now. And that is, uh, that's a bit of a problem. Now, what I want to do is figure out who is my janitor, you know? So go back over to management really quick. And we can see that in the storage room is Peter. So Peter, the first thing I'm going to have you do, as as bad as it is, that's the first thing you're going to be doing. I don't like how the janitor is automatically at the very bottom of the list. I wish they were at the very the top of the list. Um, but the very top of the list is going to be where people who don't have a job are residing. Um, you can't sort it by this. So you have to sort it by the availability, which is nothing so there's like doesn't seem to be a way to bring the janitor to the top of the list so we're always going to be using uh the bottom of the list instead so i'm going to assign you peter to get up here guests are now going to swarm either the pub or the diner it, it usually depends on you know the cruise uh but it looks like they're kind of splitting he evenly here and that's actually much preferred i would much prefer them to be evenly split between these two buildings so uh between these two rooms so that's very nice uh, okay so Peter is our janitor. Now, one thing we can do with the janitor is we need to assign them rooms to patrol. I've had comments telling me how this doesn't work and it absolutely does. There's just a condition to it working. So what you have to do is you can go into this gear, all right? And you can assign rooms to the patrol, okay? That's what we're gonna do. Now it says zero out of 10. All right, now you probably are clicking these rooms and being like, why doesn't this work? I'm clicking the rooms, nothing's happening. For whatever reason you can only do this when the game is running so you have to run time then you can assign the rooms okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna assign i think like basically these bottom rooms here i think is probably the best way to do go about this so we're gonna assign these bottom rooms here he's gonna have all these rooms assigned now why i think the janitor is maybe not necessary is because the janitor isn't really gaining the skills for the other jobs very quickly while they're working as a janitor, but they're still doing the things that you were micromanaging with the people that are uh, just waiting around. Likewise, the janitor isn't going to stop and fix a room until it's really bad, until there's a real reason to do it. So um, I could tell this janitor to come over here and clean this right now, but what I'd like to do is see whether or not he's going to do it automatically. The issue though, is that he doesn't really have a predictable like I'm going to go to this room first. He just sort of does it. So he's already on this floor. So he's just going to go and patrol these different rooms. <clears throat> the other reason why I think maybe this isn't as uh, strong as it needs to be is because if you don't have your guests, and I, I probably need to tell people to come down and do this because somebody's going to get upset if I don't. Uh, it looks like pretty much everybody's left the pub. So I'm going to come over and tell Stefano to do this, actually. Stefano is going to up and clean this now eventually peter would get down here and he'd do it but um he's not going to react to these rooms until they are significantly down low enough to where it matters so he's not going to stop for example on his way and clean and fix this even though it's in the yellow right that's the that's the issue um he would touch automatically stuff like this he would come into the room and clean these things um but he wouldn't do this yet either they're not going to do this when even when it's orange that's my issue with this right now and this is the same when you have, uh, ooh, look at all these people waiting. They're all up here. Um, this is the same when you have regular people. So if you were to staff a regular person that's not a janitor, so it's somebody spare, right? a spare person that you're swapping in and out, what you can do is you can tell them to patrol a room. And then what they'll do is they'll go to that room and then they will patrol every room on their way back as well. So you don't have to tell them to do one room at a time. They'll simply patrol every room on their way back. So what we could do for the janitor instead is we could take these extra rooms that are not uh, that are not assigned. Oh, I have to let the time run, right? I can take these extra rooms that are not assigned. And what I can do instead is to select these rooms 
and then these rooms. Now, if I select the rooms that are on the outside, what will happen is he'll patrol this one, and then on his way over to here, he'll also be checking these rooms on the way back. That is what I'm having described to me as the way that the storage room works. I don't know if that's the case, um, so I'm testing it for the first time right now, but <clears throat> that's what I'm being told. Same thing with the uh, you know people who are not assigned as a janitor specifically. They will uh, go to the room you told them to do, and then they will check the rooms on the way back. Again, that's what I'm being told. I have no idea if that's the case, so we're going to find out now. All right, so I've mostly been letting the janitor kind of do his own thing. And um, you see there's a lot of dirt and stuff to clean up here. So when, on his way back from doing this, let's hope that he takes care of that dirt spot that's in the hallway out there too. Uh, he's also not going to fix this, even though it's critical. He's going to walk away while he's right here. So I, I, again, we need the janitors to be uh, uh, smarter, right? We need them to be smarter and to do things uh, more proactively instead of waiting until it gets completely broken before you fix it, uh, especially if you're right on top of it. So you still have to micromanage the janitor. Therefore, I would say save your money. Don't get the storage room. You're going to have to micromanage them anyway. We'll see if he actually cleans that dirt spot in the hallway on his way back because he's right next to it, right? Because if you look at, if we hide the walls, the hallways and stuff, the corridors and stuff are on the other side. So we'll see. I swapped the bartenders, but there's enough people waiting in here where I'm pretty sure I'm going to need another one. So uh, we're going to say that, Pierre, I, I know that you are you know, tired and you've been trying to rest, but you, you, we just need that bartender back in that spot. There's too many people waiting and I'm going to get dinged on my ratings and stuff for these guys. I don't want them to be upset. So I need to get that person in there so they can do it. Uh, up here seems okay. Although we do need somebody brought toilet paper again. I'm going to maybe have Walter do it. He's right here. Peter's busy. Uh, Walter, can you just, I don't know, bring this guy toilet paper. They usually run for that task. Yeah. <laughs> so that's nice. Uh, okay. So this guy's clean, but see, this room is filthy. So let's see what the janitor does. He's on this floor, right? And uh, just to make sure it's actually working and doing what it's supposed to do, I'm going to assign this room to the janitor. And we're going to see whether or not he actually takes care of this or not. Because um, again, I was being told it works a certain way. And I'm not sure I'm seeing it work that way. So I think maybe that's wrong the way I was told it was working. Cause again, this bed is disgusting. So is this one and they are going to go in and automatically clean it, but will they automatically fix it? Well, not. So you have to tell them to do that. And it's, I, again, I wish you didn't have to, but you have to tell them to do that. I kind of need to swap Peter out with somebody anyway, cause he's, he's got good skills over in this way. So let's have, uh, have Karen. Karen, I'm going to actually, I'm going to swap you with, with this guy. So Karen, you're going to swap with our janitor right here. All right. Karen's now stationed at storage. And now what Karen's going to do uh, automatically. No, not automatically. We're going to have Karen come down and do this. Karen is now going to do this. So as soon as he's done fixing this, he will complete the task he's been assigned before fully switching, which gives me an extra cleaner coming down here now. Then he'll swap and go back up here. Uh, and now we have more people. We have a need for more people up here now. So we're going to need our other person right here to head back up. Cassandra, you're going to have to head back up, get back on duty uh, as a cook so that we have people being able to eat their food. So I've kind of done a crew rotation just now. It's, it's again, it's a little bit micromanagement, but it, you kind of you gotta slowly like rotate crew through uh, in this game. Kind of the only way. I am I am seeing that my fuel is not quite going down as fast as it was before. I was using like no joke. I was using like thirty thousand plus units of fuel for this Barcelona cruise. I thought it was ridiculous. I thought like what the heck's going on? And that was in version one point oh point seven, like the last video. Um, we are on 109 right now, so it's possible that things have already been fixed. Uh, it's, it's, it's likely, I would say it's even likely because I'm not noticing this problem anymore. Uh, Pierre, I think, I think it's okay for you to take a break now, buddy. Where's the, I'm trying to click. I can't click the guy I want to click. There he is. Uh, let's unassign you really quick. I think most people have been served there. Let's get you to rest. We have guests hanging out in the storage room so that's cool drunk guests in the storage room 
I wonder if there's going to be like thefts and stuff. I mean, there is a, a need for security eventually, right? So I'm actually kind of curious if maybe thefts and, you know, guest stealing things is whether that's a thing or not in the future. Because security is a job that we can staff in the future. Might need to look at swapping out Antoinette and Karen again, uh, potentially. Looks like we have this bed needs cleaned. That's going to be all you, Karen. Not sure how to... Again, I'm really not sure how to get them to do this automatically. Um, it's a 6 out of 10. So it, it looks like they don't patrol that way. Like the, the janitors don't potentially do that. Um, but I, I, I have seen like a random person like this, right? Pierre, if I tell him, Pierre, to go and do this room, he'll check other rooms on his way back. Um, but the thing is, they, again, they don't react to this. It needs to be like it's only cleaning, it seems like. It needs to be all the way down for them to, to bother. Um, so that kind of sucks. Since Pierre is currently resting, he's not using gastronomy or service. Um, I'm going to have him come over and do this job as well. Where is he? Pierre is at the very top. Of course, because he's not because he's not assigned to anything. He'd be in the very top anyway. All right, so Karen's doing this room. Uh, we want Pierre to come in and do this room. He'll come and do this room instead. All right, fire, and I think Karen is right next to it. Yeah, Karen's right next to the fire. Uh, let's make sure she responds right away to that. Sometimes they will go off and do the job they're already scheduled to do instead of the fire. Like, she's probably starting this right here. I'd rather her sh switch to this, of course, and then handle the dirt in the hallway. So now she'll hopefully do the dirt in the hallway right away. And it seems like that is getting taken care of, yes. We got this one up here. I think I want... Peter, sorry, Pierre. Pierre is going to... Actually, I'm going to swap. I'm going to put Karen back into the... Uh, where the hell is she? <laughs> Karen, where are you? Uh, we can we can highlight our crew members like this so I can see where they are. So Karen is ready to rock again on being a captain. So I'm actually going to have Karen come up to the top here. And she is going to clean and fix this room. And then uh, she can go to the uh the bridge and once she's at the bridge then of course uh maybe i'll leave this on like knowing where all my people are is actually pretty useful sometimes uh, if i can get her to come up here and handle this stuff then i can uh, still have other people do other things is that you right there pierre i want you to head over and clean this for now this room is terrible it needs clean and it needs fixed. There needs to be better automation for this stuff. Uh, I, I think that this game is going to suffer from micromanagement fatigue uh, pretty quickly. Uh, people are just not... I don't think the majority of players are interested in, in this, time, this kind of game. You're not interested in having to tell everybody to do every individual thing. Um, you you are definitely are looking for people to be staffed to a position and to do that job. And to do it well. And... Uh, the fact that your janitor doesn't fix things uh, until uh, maybe it does it when it's absolutely broken, but I haven't seen janitors really do much here. So that part concerns me with the game. And I really hope the devs have addressed that. Maybe it was the intention to have this be the, the gameplay loop, but I have to doubt that. Uh, I, I just doubt that because, well, I mean, certainly it's the intention when they, when they developed it because that's what they put it in place. But I feel like this is certainly like see how she passes by this room. It, it, she should be doing this. She should be cleaning it. And it's, she's not doing it. So um, that's just my input on it, right? For what it's worth, I'm I'm just a dude on the internet playing video games, right? But uh, I feel like like let's let's test this out, right? So durability and cleanliness is way down in this room. If I tell Pierre to come over and clean and fix this, right? Let's say Pierre comes over. And he uh, fixes this room, right? And maybe there's even a better way to do this. Is there like a way for me to see? I can't tell them to patrol a specific room when they're not a janitor. I'd have to only do this. And then I can, again, assign, assign rooms to patrol. Uh, but it's this is it's just not working out for me. <laughs> uh, so let's take this away and put you down here. Like The janitor patrols the bottom floor pretty much. All right, so you're not going to fix it. You're not going to clean it because you have to do both. I would like uh, a joint action on this. Just one, like 
tend to or something like that would be a much better thing but does he uh, on his way back deal with this room he doesn't do that so i i don't i don't see what they're saying uh <laughs> I think I think nothing works the way it's being told to me, so I'm gonna just let it rock and roll. And uh, you know, maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe it's only janitors that do it. I'm just not noticing janitors do it. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's supposed to work that way and it just doesn't. I have no idea. Walter needs to be swapped out back to engineering. So we're gonna say Walter is gonna come back and swap with engineering. Uh, so to do that, I need to have Walter come over. Uh, I, I want uh, another thing I want in this game is for me to be able to uh, assign them from this pop up. I don't want to have to go into a menu to do this, right? So I can unassign him from here. But once I do that, I can't assign him to another job. And same thing with Enrique. I can't do that. It doesn't let me do that. Um, so we're going to let them both be unassigned. Walter, you're going to go down and be the engineer. And I think I'm going to swap Pierre in now. And Pierre is going to be bartender you've been doing other stuff for long enough enrique is now my unassigned person and my unassigned person is going to be i could make you a server right now i guess it's astronomy and service is both good so let's have you go to service all right but again like the janitor has so many rooms to clean and everything gets bad everything gets bad really really fast karen you are the janitor so time for you to go down and extinguish the fire fast as you can please there we go now what will you do from here you're walking back that way even though there's a mess right in front of you and there are rooms that you are supposed to be patrolling that are completely dirty right the problem uh so karen come over here so if i if my advice to players is don't get the storage room it's supposed to fix things but it doesn't don't don't bother with it it's not worth your time um you're gonna have to micromanage your people a lot anyway so you might as well just do it and uh save yourself the money and uh yeah, definitely. All right, Karen is going to have to shift back to being our captain. So we're going to pop Karen in the captain position right now. Karen Karen is now uh, captain. But in order to do that, I need to get her closer because that's a long time uh, without it. So here's what we might do instead. Let's sw swap Diana and Karen. And then that way Diana's or Karen is up there, and then I can swap them back. So we'll have to say... Karen is going to be cook. That gets the cook to be up here. I need someone else to help cover the bartender too. Look at all these guys' timers. There's two bartenders in here, but they, they're not serving them fast enough. That's crazy. What? Why is that happening? I have enough provisions. I know one of them is very tired, but the other one isn't. Yeah, maybe it's just because he's so tired. Let's unassign Stefano because he's really tired. <clears throat> but the other one isn't. So I, I don't know why that wasn't happening a little bit faster. There wasn't that many people to serve. Uh, where's Karen? <clears throat> Karen, are you up here yet? There she is. So Karen, you're going to swap to be captain. Karen, Karen goes to be captain. All right, 95% done with this cruise. Had a lot of people unhappy down there. Uh, especially with people seeing the dirty spots and stuff. They're probably not going to get a very good uh, impression of us there. She just walked right over top of that dirt spot. Oh, no, she didn't. The dirt spot is inside this room. Oh, okay. I thought it was in the hallway. All right, fair enough. Diana's going to have to come over and do this too. And you want to do this before the cruise ends. Because otherwise, this stuff is going to linger right and it's gonna have you have to start the next cruise with it so you got to do this stuff like before it ends start fixing please we still have a couple rooms that are bad um i'm not entirely sure what the progress on that one was but we were in the process of fixing it so we didn't get a whole lot of cash there we didn't reach the goal we aren't going to get bonus money but we did increase our reputation not by a lot but we did increase our reputation ultimately it's going to be rated as bad, but we end up with a lot of money and uh, we still have quite a bit of fuel, surprisingly. So that's good. To, that's good to see. I'm glad we can see that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this because I really don't 
want to deal with that later on. Uh, again, micromanagement, right? Um, I think, I think for this game, I, I would really like to see progress faster. Um, I am having a very difficult time getting anything other than this small ship. To, to upgrade the ship requires an enormous financial investment. Um, and I'm going to run another cruise. I'm going to do this between videos uh, because I think there's another available ship right here in Antalya. Right? It's a very long cruise. It's 2,000 nautical miles, which is double what we just did. But we only used 10,000 units of fuel for that cruise instead of 40, which is great. So I'm hoping that this cruise would use like 20,000 units of fuel. Okay. So see the difficulty? It's so high. And they want these various, you know, spe special rooms and stuff. And I simply can't provide those things. I would love to be able to provide a fitness room, for example. Um, you know, things like that. So if I was to go into my build mode. No, <laughs> um, I could sell all rooms, but I would like to sell uh, only one room. If I sold this, it's 2400. I paid 4500 for it, I think is what it was. Uh, double checking utilities storage was 4500. So you get half the money back. That's going to get me to just over 10 grand. But 10 grand. It, I, don't, I don't get anything, you know, like I don't have anything unlocked that's going to get me what I need. Like I don't have the fitness room. I don't have all these other rooms. I've ran so many cruises and I don't have these rooms available, right? The room is unavailable in this Harbor is what it says, right? In this Harbor. So if you go back to the cruise planner and Talia here, I believe special rooms. These are the ports in which these rooms are available. Is that how I'm supposed to read this? not the rooms that they want it's not what they want it's the rooms that you can purchase in that in that harbor so if i want the gym for example i need to go to monaco and then i can buy the gym right dubrovnik has a gym it also has these larger cabins right the pub fitness room that's what i wanted to get so if i go back to athens i can buy the fitness room i think that's what it's saying because barcelona doesn't have any rooms available well what's the difference between a gym and a fitness room uh, I don't know. Uh, I'd like to see, hopefully, because I know the fitness room is very large. I've seen, I tried to place it before when I was in Athens. It's also very expensive. So let's go to Monaco. It's, it looks like a pretty short cruise. We shouldn't have to buy anything uh, from Monaco to Messina. I don't believe we'll have to buy anything there because, again, it's a very short cruise. So we're going to go to Monaco. And we get uh, a good ticket price for that, too, uh, for what it is. So if I go to tickets... Uh, I should be able to sell, I think, 16. I'm not going to have the newspaper ad, just the flyer. But I can reduce the price down to, let's say, 100 bucks, And that should allow me, I think, to get this with only flyers. Because you absolutely can see your tickets get undersold. Uh, and the more rooms you have, the more the less likely you are to sell all of them unless you advertise. Uh, okay, so 1600 bucks is what we've got there. I don't believe there's any reason to purchase any provisions. You know? I think we got everything we needed to get to Monaco and then back to, you know, the other two ports for purchasing revisions uh, or provisions from there. So I'm going to run ahead and set sail here on this cruise and uh, we'll see if I'm right about that. I think the special rooms is not what they're requesting on the boat. I think the special rooms are what they are hoping to, uh, like what, 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 uh, what you can buy at that port, I think is what that actually is. Uh, looks like Stefano can be a bartender. All right, there we go. Definitely want all of your service buildings fully stocked at the start of every cruise because you're going to have a huge wave of people in at least one of the rooms. Um, and with this many people on a small boat, it's going to be both of the rooms. So it, it, sooner or later, you run into this problem where you can't really serve everyone in a timely manner because you don't offer enough services. I'm hoping that the gym fixes this and I can shift a couple of these cabins down to the lower levels. Uh, probably what I would do is just shift all of my passenger cabins like these two here. I'd probably put these down at the lower levels. That way guests can be up here closer to the services. Um, and at that point, uh, I'm actually hoping that we get this gender neutral bathroom or whatever. I'm kind of hoping I can fit it in one of these smaller spots because right now we have some places where I just simply can't place anything. Just the, the organization, the way everything works out with the spacing, you can't place everything. So, yeah. 
in any case uh janitors do i have to reassign this yet or no i do they are still re okay so this was between cruises um in the last version you, you did have to reassign these every single cruise but now it does save your preferences so that's nice um i'm going to have you patrol i think these rooms here we're gonna we're gonna save these rooms here as your patrol we're not patrolling the top rooms uh i'm just gonna have the kitchen staff go and manage those uh and then for these rooms that are on this side i'm gonna have one of the bartenders go and do it and i think that will uh i think that'll hopefully be fine so let's see she's just gonna patrol the room so she stopped she tagged up here there's nothing to do nothing to do uh we could do a little bit of cleaning here just to keep it keep ourselves ahead of it um but i think the next room is actually worse uh, nope. No, I think we're okay here. I did pay for it. All right, here. The, Diana can do this. We have the janitor on the top now. Good. Okay, interesting. I did see Antoinette. So I told her to clean up this mess. And the bed was also in need of fixing. And it got down to the point where it was like doing those little graphical things that pops up. She automatically went ahead and did that. So this might be that thing where if you tell them to patrol a room, they'll, they'll do other things in that room too if, if it's really needed if it's not needed then they don't do it but if it's needed they will automatically take care of something i just wish the janitor would do that because again i, I can tell the janitor to clean but they will not automatically fix at least it doesn't seem like they're doing that for me so all right career level up there it is not too shabby <laughs> keep working hard I might actually ge get it <laughs> i'm not gonna do it anymore uh somewhere in life okay so We've unlocked uh, uh, ca Cagliari? Cagliari, Cagliari. I don't know. You may now select this harbor as a cruise destination. Special rooms, restaurant, gym, man, restaurant, restroom, women, restroom. Okay, cool. So we did good on that cruise. It's a fairly straightforward one. I want to go in and see if we have those special rooms available here. So services, uh, not there. Entertainment, gym, there it is. So that's what those are. When you're reading the cruise planner, and you're reading these little like special rooms and stuff that is what rooms you can add at these ports that's not the demands for those guests okay uh so like the diner for example this isn't what people really necessarily want you're gonna get people who want lots of different things and the best way to get your 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 star rating up is to offer a variety of services so with 14 grand I can't afford a $24,000 gym, which is insanely expensive. These things are really, really pricey, but I can't afford this. It just doesn't work. Now I can upgrade ship if it was available, but it's not, I can't really do anything in this port. So I guess we're just making money, which is good. We need to bank up money because again, the rooms are very expensive. One thing I can do with this money though, right? Is I can choose to upgrade the rooms and that natively will automatically upgrade a lot of other people's experiences as well. So I can go in and start upgrading some of these rooms because they are, I think we're gonna do that. Like I'm gonna spend some money making sure these rooms don't go bad quite as quickly. So we'll do a one, a one star upgrade on all of the guest rooms make sure that we have all of them at least a little bit higher up and uh, I think maybe we'll go in and get the pub to be upgraded a little bit more we get bonus to our money if our guest experience is great right and also you get the provision usage goes up as well and this is a 1800 bucks just to raise it half a star that sucks <laughs> that sucks a lot I actually curious if there's a way to make it to where your staff doesn't uh, lose, you know, their uh, their stamina quite so quickly. Like I would love upgrades to these buildings that made things easier for staff so that they, you know, don't lose their uh, lose their ability to work that job quite as quickly. Well, uh, yeah. So let's see if maybe we can rearrange some things. Maybe that's something we could do here. If I move this over here, let's stick the let's face it the janitor is not really coming back down here very often uh so it doesn't look like i can do a whole lot i would love to get that in here and i just can't do that there's just not enough room for that uh i would really like to get another one of these crew quarters too just to get more more staff on hand would be great uh i can add looks like one maybe one more crew or one more cabin here so we're gonna say the bed is on the uh let's actually do it 
like I think it's like this, and then blue. I think it I think it's this one. Well, no, it wasn't that one. It was this side. Yeah, it was this one. Yeah. Oh well. I wanted it to be like back-to-back -back beds here, but it doesn't honestly matter. And then we'll go ahead and upgrade that one as well. So all of our, we can now have 17 guests on board the boat and uh, they all have a better room experience. So maybe I'll make some extra money doing that. My next cruise I'm gonna plan is, uh, it looks like this one's a really good ticket price for a very short cruise. So I think I'll be doing this one. Seems like it's not that difficult either. So I'll be doing this one. Uh, we'll have this saved up for the next video. I'll probably will do this one and then head to Messina, load up on provisions, head to Athens, load up on fuel, and then we'll start there uh, for the next video, okay? So hopefully I have enough money and I'll be able to purchase that fitness room in Athens. I suspect that I will because it's a $13,500 room, I think is what it is. Um, and most likely I'd just get rid of the storage room and make room for it. Um, you also see that there are some ports with available ships and that is an SL. I don't know what that is. Um, possible that I, maybe I save up the money instead and get a bigger boat instead of uh, saving up for the fitness room. You know, maybe that's the best play. I don't know. Leave me your thoughts down in the comments. Uh, if this video seemed like I was complaining a lot, it's not. I'm mostly just giving honest feedback on the game. Um, you know, we have to realize problems as well as praise, uh, you know, successes. And uh, I think it's still, it's still quite fun the way it is. I just think it's a little bit high on the micromanagement side right now. And through continuous development, I think that gets worked out and it gets better over time. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll see ya. Bye-bye.